based on my previous analytics, my viewers like to see slightly simpler animations. So in today's tutorial, we're going to tackle this particular animation and it's going to be really easy to do. Let's begin the tutorial. The first thing that you'd have to do is go to edit preferences and then go to the add-ons tab over here and search for extra objects. And you can see this option that says add curve extra object. Make sure that it's checked and then you can go ahead and save preferences and close it. Now we can take our default cube, press X and delete it and then press shift A and search for curve and under the curve you should see a bunch of new options. So we're going to go down and we're going to see this knots option and within that we're going to search for the torus knot plus. This is the initial shape that you get and if you're happy with that good enough but what I want to do is go to the drop down over here that appears as long as you don't do anything else and expand it. Remember if you've accidentally gotten rid of the drop down at the bottom by clicking somewhere else you can always press function f9 to bring the panel back up but you have to make sure that you don't do any other commands such as moving, grabbing, rotating, scaling or any of that. So function f9 brings it back and we're going to check the option that says extra options and down here you'll see a height. So we're just going to increase the height by a little bit. Maybe I'll go with a factor of 2.5 and I'm also going to go to the exterior interior and change the interior radius to 0 0.8 and under the surface I'm going to go ahead and reduce the bevel depth to 0 because we don't actually need to see that. And I'm going to increase the curve resolution from 100 to maybe 200 just to make it much smoother. Once I'm happy with that I can go ahead and find a location that I like. Maybe an angle like this and then I'll press Control alt 0 to snap my camera to view. Now we can press tab to go back into object mode and we're just going to leave the knot as is. Then we'll press shift a and search for a cube and we're going to add our geometry node modifier to this particular cube. So we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to add in a new window and change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Now we'll press this new button to add a new geometry node tree and from the group input we'll press shift a and search for a transform geometry node so that we can actually scale it up. So we'll play around with the scale and we'll just reduce the y and the z to maybe 0 0.25 and we can increase the value on the x to maybe 2 and now if we add in a subdivision surface we get a really nice sharp curve we'll take a look at what that looks like so search for a subdivision surface node and plug it in and of course increase the levels to make it smoother and this is the shape that we get now you can always increase the value on the x to make it longer and also reduce the values on the y and z to make it thinner but i'll leave the values up to you however the problem with this is that the entire thing becomes completely ovular but i want it to be more like a rounded cube so i want only the edges to have like a really high bevel but i don't want the entire thing to be one single curve so to fix that i'll press shift a and search for a subdivide mesh node and just plug that before the subdivision surface and that way I get something like a rounded cube and I just like this particular shape better for my animation so I'm going to use it. With that we can play around with this level just before rendering however I want to also press shift a and search for set shade smooth so that you don't see any of the ridges even if they are present and I have to set the material so press shift a and search for set material and plug that in after the set shade smooth and select the default material for now and that's it for the geometry node section and next up we can add the rest of the modifiers so we'll go to the modifiers tab over here and search for a curve modifier and then for the curve object we can select that torus knot that we just selected and after that we can press 0 to go into our camera view and with the object selected you see if you press gx you'll see how it moves along the curve really nicely and just continues following the curve however we have to make this loop so we're gonna animate its x location later on first off i think it's a little too fat so i'm gonna select it and if you can't see the geometry node tree here make sure that you have the geometry node modifier selected in the modifier stack and i'm gonna go down to the scale and just decrease the x and y to maybe 0 0.15 and that'll be my thickness after which i'll first add in the background elements before the actual animation so press shift a and search for a cube and once you've added in the cube go to the constraint properties down here and then search for add object constraint and search for a copy rotation and then for the target go ahead and choose your camera so that it perfectly faces the camera then press tab to go into edit mode go to face select over here select the face right in front of the camera press x delete faces now you can press tab to go back into object mode and you can change the transform orientations from global to local so that you don't move it in some angled axis but you move it to its own axis so now we'll scale it on its x-axis by just a bit and then we'll scale it on its z-axis and we'll also bring it closer to the curve object by pressing gz and just bringing it in so we have to make sure that it doesn't get cut off at any point of time 
And so we can actually switch on transparency over here, go to the side and you see it's not going to get cut off because the curve is present over here and there's a little bit of edge present. However, if we select the object and just press GX and move it, you see it is now starting to get cut off. So we have to select this box, press GZ and move it just behind that and that'll be all right. Now, if it's still visible in your camera view, the edge of the box that is, you can go ahead and either scale it on the Z axis a little bit more and then bring it front till it covers up the camera area or you could scale it on the Y axis and just play around with the settings that you feel would be most appropriate. However, I'm going to take my original torus knot object and just scale it up so that this curve object almost touches the top and the sides as well. In this case, it's already crossing the top. So I'm going to have to take my box and just scale it on the Y axis a little bit more. And I'm going to have to push it back on the Z so that there's no clipping happening. And that should be all right. And with that, we can start the actual animation. So let's select our cube object, increase our timeline a little bit and set all of our render and animation defaults. So go to our render properties, switch on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and then go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. End frame is gonna be 150, so that it's a five second long animation. Output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format is gonna be FFmpeg video and the encoding has to have a container of MPEG4 with an output quality of perceptually lossless. Then on frame zero, you can go ahead and press I location with the cube object selected, then go to frame 150 and just press GX and move it till it comes back to approximately the same region. So I think this is approximately the same region. So I'll press I location. And now we're just gonna toggle between frame 150 and zero to see how much of motion there is. So at frame 150, I actually moved front by a little bit. So you can see that I've just moved front a little bit. So I'm just gonna press GX and I'm gonna move it back by a little bit. And now you can see that it comes back to the original because I forgot to add the keyframe. So just press GX, bring it back and then press I location. And then again, toggle between zero and 150. It's still a little bit forward. So again, GX, move it back and press I location. And you can just play around with this till you get it perfect. However, another thing that you could do is take this cube itself, press shift D, enter, and then select the second keyframe. And then make sure that your cursor is down in the timeline itself with just this keyframe selected, press X, delete keyframes. And that way with transparency switched on, you'll get a visual of exactly where the cube ended. So now you can select your cube, press GX and bring it exactly to the other cube. And once you're there, press I location. And now you can select that new cube that you created and press delete to delete it. Now between frame zero and 150, there will be zero difference. So you can go ahead and press spacebar to play the animation. However, it's gonna start slow, speed up in the middle and then slow down at the end. So to fix that, select both your keyframes by pressing A, then press T, linear. Then you can switch off transparency and this is the animation that you have. Right now it's going only at five frames per second. So it's really slow compared to what the final animation will be. To change that, go to playback and change play every frame to frame dropping. And now you'll get a realistic idea of how fast your blob is going to move. And with that, we can start off the actual texturing. So for the texturing, we're gonna change our default scene from solid to rendered, and we're gonna switch off our light because we don't need it. Then we'll go to our world properties, increase the color all the way to white, and maybe give it a slightly bluish tone, maybe something like that. After that, we'll select our cube material or the outer box that we created, go to the material properties, press this button to add in a new material. We'll call this background cube and we'll change the base color to a slightly darker color and we'll increase the metallicness so that there's much better reflections and we'll reduce the roughness to 0.2 or 0.4. To not get distracted by anything outside the camera view, we'll select our camera, go down to the camera properties, go to viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one. And we can also switch off overlays over here. Next up for the actual cube, we already had the material set in the geometry node. So we'll select that over here and we'll do pretty much the same thing. We'll increase the metallicness. We'll reduce the roughness, maybe 0.2. We'll change the base color to a nice dark color. And I'm going to change the blend mode to alpha blend. And I'm going to increase the transmission all the way to one. And I'm going to decheck show back face. And that actually changes the complete look of the metal. Although we are not actually giving it any transmission and we don't have refraction switched on and there's no transparency, just by checking the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend, you can see the difference that's actually created. And of course, this might be the type of look that you're going for, or you could always change it to opaque and have 
this slightly more metallic look, but feel free to play around with these settings and just create something that looks cool in your opinion, because that's all that matters. And just for these screen space reflections to work a little bit better in Eevee when you actually render out an animation and not have any random jumps, one thing that I found useful is selecting your background cube, pressing tab to go into edit mode and just switch on overlays again so that you can see what you're doing. Go to edge select mode and just select all the edges and since you're selecting all of them you can just tap a to select all of them and then press ctrl b to add in a bevel and just bevel it in a little bit and add in a lot of loop cuts and then press tab to go back into solid mode and change the sh object shading to shade smooth and that way there won't be any random changes when actually rendering out in ev so with that the only thing left for you to do is press render animation hopefully that was a simpler one but the techniques used are still powerful enough for you to use in all your other animations and just create stunning renders. If you want more complicated videos, comment what you want to see down below and I will read all of them and respond to as many as I can. Until the next video comes out, which is gonna be tomorrow because I post videos every single day, keep creating and definitely check out this video which is linked in the top right corner because it's pretty similar to this one and you're probably gonna learn a thing or two from it. So until the next video comes out, keep creating and stay creative.